Okay, yeah, you might be aware that yeah, there are several sort of buckle systems, even within HEMA, that are practiced or reconstructed, and um, they all have their peculiarities. They are also different, the posture is different, the kinds of weapons that are used are different, and we are, as we are working with 153, noticed in a lot of circumstances that um, what the manuscript has as options for us in fighting is different even from uh, buckler systems that are maybe not even a hundred years younger, like from uh, Andrei Liebnitzer, for instance, from the 15th century, or sometimes even what appears to be done in uh, the Paulus Karl manuscripts. Or Tarnifer, for that matter. So there's, of course, a question if there are different solutions for what seems to be the same situation, there must be a reason for it. And what we just covered in the uh, earlier demonstration, the use or the presence of big shields, is, and this is our hypothesis, uh, one of the reasons why uh, 133 has these different um, uh, situations or, or solutions. So if we have this situation where we have a bind on the inside, to the left of our blade, so which looks roughly like this. So, um, we have um, a play from Liebnitz, the first play, which uh, sort of deals with this kind of situation. And in 133, we have this um, play from Second Ward against Tritzen, uh, which has a similar situation. Now, in 133, the constellation, um, or the, the basic setup, looks like this. Uh, Ola is going to uh, Second Ward, so he's attacking somewhere from this shoulder, probably with the inverted uh, hand cut and I'm doing the Schützen. And if you notice the position of our weapons, you see that my Schützen is incredibly high. So it's on face level rather than shoulder level. So, and what I do from here, he's starting to do a bind, and if I can, I do a cut to the right side as the priest recommends. So this is our interpretation of that. See, that's the same blow we were talking about earlier. It's basically just a Sturzhaar. The cool thing is that if he's got his buckler up, there's no way I can go with my blade here. Yeah? He's completely covered and strikes at me with the Sturzhaar. So, the funny thing is, um, what appears to be in Liebnitzer has a different um, approach right from the start. We have an Oberhau, both do something like an Oberhau, and then we thrust from below. So in our interpretation yeah, of that, wait a second, mind you, this is, this is an Oberhau, because he also addresses the Sturzhau. So uh, he separates these two, he divides these two blows. So we can assume if that Liebnitzer talks about an Oberhau, he is talking about an Oberhau, namely using the long edge to attack, right? Mm. So uh, we imagine it to start a bit like this. We're both doing this kind of overhaul, and we end up in a situation like this. So and if we are supposed to thrust from below, of course our weapons can't be here. So this is the uh, basic difference you see. Our weapons now are much lower than they were in 133. So we can still thrust here, and maybe later we have to wind up. So there's the question, why do we do this? And one interesting way to tackle it is, of course, to see what happens if I do the 133 version without a shield. So Roland is adopting a uh, second ward, and I'm doing a Schützen. Okay, obviously this is a bad idea. So because um, even if this is a sort of active Schützen, so it's, uh, it would be here and it would immediately pursue, still the hand is fully exposed. Why can I keep the hand up there? because of the buckler, because I have a shield. So the shield, or the presence of the shield somewhere here, in the middle, um, is allowing me to do this. And the shield is also allowing me to do that, um, if we do the bind again, you're uh, attacking from the second ward, I'm doing the Schützen, but I'm doing this kind of blow. Leaving the bind, if we didn't have shields, would be a pretty risky affair. But we have the shield, and now I can afford it, because if he wants to cut somewhere else, there's a shield. Or he has to go around the shield, you know the game, but he long won't. tempo. Yeah, he would lose time and distance and so on. So I can do that. So we think that the reason 133 does things differently is because the shield is used much more, not necessarily actively, but the presence of the shield in the center is something that the system relies on very heavily. Exactly, because it's based on the kind of fighting that was used in preceding centuries 
and all of this heavily relied on the shield. So now, um, in the later treatises, I mean the uh, main weapon you ha we have for fighting is of course the longsword, and the Nuremberg Hausbuch uh, tells us that uh, longsword fencing comes from messer fencing. So, and we assume at the moment, and this is our hypothesis, that by the time uh, these fencing systems have changed, and this would be somewhere in the late 14th century maybe, we're not sure about that, um, due, to, due to the improvements in armor, of course? Pro probably, yeah, yeah. So that probably, the, yeah. Yeah, that the uh, importance of the shield is something that is always there, diminishes. There can, of course, be parallel development. So we haven't, uh, there's no exhaustive research in that respect. And it's just a hypothesis. Yeah, but it's a hypothesis. And um, at the time where I have only the blade, and I have to use the blade only to guard me, then, of course, I'm not presenting it here, but I'm keeping it in front of my body. I'm attacking here. So there's roughly, uh, this area here is sort of guarded by the blade. So I can erase it here, but now of course I have different options to attack. Do it like here, do it like here, and if he is displacing me, I can do the Überschnappen, according to Andre Liebnitz's first play. So we're still using the buckler, and it still makes sort of sense. But it's sort of um, using the buckler in a system that has its center, or its, let's say, the um, the situation for which it's most optimized in a different environment, a different martial environment. You could say, you could say um, that before everything was built up on the presence of the shield and uh, then the blades came in and now it's vice versa. So we are looking at a world where the blade is most important and then you integrate the shield. This more or less the case, yeah. And it's, um, you can of course um, think of later buckler systems like rapier and buckler or, or side sword and buckler and you can always um, if you want if you're doing research in these fields you can always have an eye on what is the basic system and usually with both side sword and rapier as far as I know um, dealing or learning how to use the weapon alone is the thing you learn first so you can use other sidearms you can use a buckler, a targa, a dagger, a cloak for instance um, but you do most of the stuff with a blade. So it's nice to have a buckler. It's like an armored offhand, if you will. But you do most of the things with the blade first. And we think in 133, there's still like an earlier stage of fighting where you make the shield, which you always have then, a much more uh, central part of uh, the fighting system. Yeah, and I really like this idea because uh, when we reconstruct historical swordsmanship, historical combat systems, we as modern people, not having a direct connection to that particular culture, tend to look at it um, by asking ourselves, what's the most efficient thing to kill it? So you, you, you make efficiency of anything that is being done the top priority. But we tend to forget that um, any martial art is part of a given culture, and um, there is tradition, and um, even um, in 3227a, when they talk about Lichtenau and how he traveled many countries to learn his art, they make uh, it clear that he did not invent this art. It has been invented many, many centuries ago. So they have a sense for history. They say, okay, this is really, really old. It doesn't match our sense of history. They knew, okay, so the world was created by God many centuries ago, and then Jesus came and and then martial arts were invented, and that's a long time ago. <laughs> but uh, they have a sense that they are part of a particular tradition. Yeah, it's not like uh, stuff is being made, made, being made up on the spot. There's always a traditional element. And in general, military and fighters tend to be actually pretty conservative. So new things are not quickly being integrated. So. What we try to encourage is to not only look at the limited uh, part that the actual Fechtbuch is, but also ask in which um, environment was it written, what is the tradition that it uh, was built on. Okay.